way back we've been friends since way back made in since way back how it's been since way back since back then can't change that we've been all right advertisements over <laughs> stream started hooray are we in the discord let's make sure we're in the discord all right and we're set i think make sure all the sound stuff's good i guess but i think it should be all right <sighs> good holy it feels like it's been a while i think we've been a little bit out uh three weeks i think though yeah something like that but that's all right we're back at it you know things happen stuff happens there's been a lot of craziness going on yeah lots uh, of releasing um captain marvel did you go see that yet yeah yeah did you check it out i liked it i um i know it's been trolled on a lot but from i mean i don't understand this thing of she has no emotion. Like, I didn't get that at all from the movie. Yeah, I didn't see that. I I, what I will say is this, and I... I think it played to her characters with Very well. I don't yeah. think what they were getting was that that was who she was supposed to be. Right, she's a military was, officer. Yeah, you're not a, supposed a, a to have... An airport, yeah, yeah like, not, all your emotions hanging on your face. And and, look at Cap in his original appearance. Does, like, a little bit when before he soldiers up, you know, he's emotional, but when Cap's fighting... The only look on his face is the I need to save people look. You know what I mean? The look of where's everyone out? Yeah. What's going on? What I will say, and yeah, I don't get the no emotion part either because I guess you would have to not consider sass an emotion. Yeah, I feel like, like I she showed she's so sassy. much sass. She's very like the sassy whole movie. through the whole movie. Like even like, yeah, like even the, her interactions with Nick Fury. Nick Fury, just, the like, aliens. Like yeah. Yeah, the whole movie, she's just kind of sassy, which is to her character in yeah. the comics she's a little sassy and a little stiff and well and we talked about this i was not Excited looking forward for to this i thought it was excellent i really enjoyed the movie yeah a lot of people were giving it flack they're like oh this this not as good as wonder woman and i'll tell you this i think i personally enjoyed wonder woman more but as a critic i would give it to captain marvel i feel like it was a much more well-rounded movie that didn't hit a lot of the tropes and then just an overall better movie in a lot of respects the twist really got me for this one are you talking about the scrolls yeah or, or yeah but the Mar twist Bell. the twist twist about them oh, i don't want to give yeah, it because yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a yeah, really yeah. And no okay, and i was yeah i was but then i've also heard that it could still happen that there is yeah still, which i'm i i could also see and don't get me wrong if you go another by another group of right and that's the, why because he said there was others out there. right there are other cells and refugees and which was maybe would those be, other ones now start to think like right. well and, you know what f you guys you guys ruined us right and, we're gonna... and now we're gonna <laughs> and even to the other plot like who knows i mean for all we know he was lying you know what i mean or at least exaggerated that would have been a very very bad like lie though like i would have felt like damn really tell us you really did it dirty like that, that it would time. but that would, be the, <laughs> that would be the ultimate later like comeback where it's like no nah, we were evil <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what i mean especially coming from him and that's the other thing i will say they made it there were no there were no side characters in this movie when I say that, I mean that every supporting character was, just... was treated like they were an individual in a story. They weren't treated like a prop in the story. Yeah. So, for example, like, um, and I don't want to give it away too much, uh, Science Scroll. Oh, yeah. The One of my favorite characters, even though he only has, like, two minutes of screen time, my favorite part being when he comes in is like, Mom? <laughs> it's like, or even it's like, you're my science guy. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, little stuff. And granted, that's comedy, this thing. So people will pull away, and obviously, they'll always. Marvel movies don't aren't serious enough. Uh, that's their formula, though. Yeah, that, and it works. That, and it said, fucking works. That's they want it's, to do. It works so well, DC had to copy it <laughs> twice to get and two good movies. do it good because they rushed it. Yeah. Well, I mean, even less than their formula for, like, the end game, more like the movie formula. If you look at Wonder Woman and Aquaman, do you know what they look like? Marvel movies. Yeah. They're really bright. Yeah, she, They're her, super well, funny. I like that her suit was, yeah, they needed to make that they, bright. They like, did. They, if they did and it was like Here's the thing out, that gets me like, mm. even more. If anything, except for Batman, DC characters are supposed to be the embodiment 
of good and light and justice yeah. and and we didn't get that. I mean, you could do dark DC story. I've read some right. dark DC right. stories, but, but they, they have a lot of. They still have their color, right? Their... And even beyond that, they're done in side tangents. That they're not. Those dark stories don't make up the core of what the Justice League does no. or is. You know what I mean? They are at their base hope, the American ideal kind of. You know what I mean? Like the thought that powerful people with good intentions can help save the world. Mm -hmm. Which we really don't get from the DC universe of current, except for from Wonder Woman. Even Aquaman is not a help the people kind of guy because they need help. He is in a general sense, but not in the overarching story sense, right? So he'll help people on the street or in the bars or people getting tossed out on shores. But he's not out there like Aquaman roaming the seas. Until obviously it was a coming into the Aquaman mm -hmm. story, so we can't judge all that harshly. But that being my point is like we constantly get hashed on for these funny movies, but DC's only two movies that have done critically well. Aquaman. And when I say, sorry, I should say quick, financially well, how about that? <laughs> yeah. Have done financially well, have been very much base modeled off of Marvel movies. Yeah. I mean, you could almost cut and paste Wonder Woman to Captain America. It's very, very similar. They did a really good job, and that's why it got us such a high rating for me, etc. But. It, that was also part, something fell off for me was just the villain but yes and the storyline the storyline kind of hit a dead end yeah. where it was like oh Ares and this is like uh, yeah it would have been much better to have the one we talked about where there was no Ares and humans were just she just had to learn that humans were evil evil yeah, yeah I like yeah I felt like they just kind of had to put that in there like oh fuck we gotta put in a, a she's gotta do a, a which last which you uh, do who brought and, and to be fair if they <laughs> hadn't had a villain you would have gotten just as many gripes yeah that there wasn't a villain which a lot of people are trying to gripe on Captain Marvel for she Not didn't having... really have a villain it was more of like an antagonist that was right. more but if you consider that would be like considering the Chitari not a protagonist or not even the Chitari, like the Dark Elves, right? You have an invasionary force, the Kree, right? In general, we don't have a specific Kree, right? You get uh, whatever her commander's name, and I can never remember what his name is. Uh, and then you have Ronin and the Supreme Intelligence. Also, per I thought that was interesting, a cool take on the Supreme Intelligence, um, I think I would have preferred the giant head in a jar, but that's just me. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. That's uh, and my only other real gripe with the movie at all was Marvel. Oh, so you weren't really you didn't like? I that didn't. They it did wasn't the that like swap. it. It didn't bother me, but I just didn't see a point or a reason necessarily for I it. I think. I think it was more along the tone of having more I, I, female characters. Yeah, yeah, and then I think they just don't want to muddy the water of like, okay, well, there was. This Marv, she was the original one, and now you're right. the next one. But wouldn't that make even less sense with a female named Marvel? Yeah. I don't know. I, I know what you're saying. That was, and it, like I said, it, you know, like, it there's just, the it's movie kinda, for me. If you go back in the history of it, it's kind of a little wonky. It's a little, her history is a little messed Especially up. Especially now that they did the whole reboot in her last. Yeah, and then number 12, and then I think that's where they were more focused on, was more on issue number. I think they were kind of just trying to ignore all that other past history, and they kind of started fresh and started on issue, uh, 2012 Captain yeah, Marvel. Yeah, pretty much. Which I don't blame them, because like you said, it's really convoluted. The story takes forever. I don't, yeah, I don't know. I just don't think it would have worked right. Right, it, it wasn't just for the like... film, which is fine. Um, but yeah, the people... I, mean, just, I never understood. Like I said, I'm waiting for the people to bash it, and they're like, "Oh, the feminist liberalist agenda." I'm like, I watched was that a movie. Of people, yeah, they were bashing on it for that, but but I didn't see any of that. Uh, I didn't see that either. I, I'd, there were a couple examples. I of think this. that's what the reason why is they they were trying to say that if they would have done it a man, then they would have been more feminist. That she would have had to have relied on that. I, there was a bunch of dumb stuff. I on guess there. I can see that, yeah, too, but. That one makes a little more sense for me with the feminism run on the plot. But like I said, it, it was such to the point that, and, and that's the other thing is people mistake feminism for toxic feminism, mm -hmm. just like they mistake masculinity for toxic masculinity. Yeah. And so not off, you know, feminism at its core is just the belief that women are equal to men. Yeah. That's it. And for as much as I can tell. This woman, this movie is stuck to that ideal very well. It was not toxic in any way. There was no man bashing. No. There was no, 
there wasn't even an f- intense amount of female bashing, to be honest. There was a couple scenes where you got that toxic masculinity and, you know, the whole cockpit scene uh, or whatever when she's doing the memory run. Oh, yeah. But realistically, I didn't see it. You know, I just don't see what they're ragging on about. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It seems to me that they're just trying to press it. Um, yeah, it just feels like, yeah, just people are wanting to bash on it with every way they can. Yeah. And Even when it first came out, they were uh, bashing on it. I mean, yeah, before, because yeah. now Rotten Tomatoes changed their policy. I don't know if you know, but now they they don't allow you now to, as a critic, not a critic, sorry, as an audience member, to review the movie until it actually officially releases. Which should be the fucking way it is anyway. If you don't got a press pass, because they were looking at the reviews now, and I think it had over fifty eight thousand reviews, which made no sense to them because they're like, how is that possible for one day when only battle ain't a battle. Uh, Lee the Angel, whatever, has only 53,000 and it's already been out for a month. Yeah, it's so pretty it funny. Ma- it makes no yeah, sense. Yeah, the trolling is real. And that's what makes me laugh. The people are like, oh, DC's not trolling, huh? That's why your audience score is so low? It's like, yeah, that would definitely explain why the audience score is so low. If you just have someone go in and make a bunch of fake accounts and rate one every time, then yeah, that that brings down the average. Or just make a mean. bunch of sh- shit ton of bots and just yeah, have the bots program. This is you, shit, you, you shitty know, stuff. Yeah, you know as well as I do that it's super easy to do, honestly, to run a bot program. that probably take less than an hour to code for someone who's even half yeah, decent. Just have them go off. Yeah. <laughs> Real easy. You so, run your little bot program. It's super, it's super stupid simple. We used to do it back in the day to run those bump chats. You know what yeah. I mean? Or you would bump up the chat. That's what, yeah, that's what Twitch players uh, do. But yeah, I mean, I, I liked it. I enjoyed the movie. It was, it was good. good. It wasn't like a Amazing. 10 out of 10. No, it was, God, oh my no. gosh, this is no. what we got to say. But if I'm I had to, say I'd give it, it a solid eight. Yeah, I say an solid eight. eight. Yeah, it was like, it was kind of like Doctor, I've heard people say it was kind of like Doctor Strange. It was like just there and yeah. it was good. Yeah. But it was like nothing to bash on or hate on. No, or no, it wasn't bad. But it, it was, was just there. <laughs> yeah. And all right. So I want to discuss this because a lot of people, there were two things. One, this movie didn't follow the typical Marvel uh, formula oh, okay. for origin movies, at least. Uh-huh. In that, you know, we usually, you know, if you think about, let's say, Captain America, Thor, everyone, you start at, you know, the point where that and regress the story come back and in many ways they did her but for her it was more like the story started where she was yeah kind of just throws in the middle and right just like, right you, we'll, we'll kind of unravel everything she very much felt like a piece of a puzzle being fitted into the story you know what i mean especially and that's what the people were bashing on was the references they're like we get it you're in a marvel universe movie you don't have to show every thing is like so suddenly just because i show one piece of another marvel movie which they do in every marvel movie there's another there's they an easter egg yeah because it has to be something to connect it to the other movie somehow yeah it's it's universe building dude yeah and so that's why it's some people they some were complaining the shit out of that they're like you couldn't come up with a new energy source or yeah thing. oh like really? for the tesseract yeah and i'm like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. uh I, yeah but then like it's already it's, it's already there the yeah it's fucking universe. there why wouldn't you use it and then it gives even more plot and credibility to the stuff that fury does later with the tesseract because he doesn't treat it like it's his first time dealing with it yeah and uh, just because in the in the comics the original one right she gets it from this it's kind of the same right she gets it from a blast right and then uh gives it's her the marvel powers. blast yeah when i forget what, yeah but it's it, out in the fucking woods it's some science experiment and he reveals he's captain marvel and yeah, yeah and then, it's a whole thing so that makes sense but then yeah, they had to like put. I mean, were they just gonna make their own brand new thing now? And just right. Like here, I mean, it's easier to just say, "Hey, we got the tesseract. We'll put it there. This is what obviously is gonna make her powers go boom, and then she gets them. And yeah. then we can later now explain that this is where it was been kind of during this time, and then that's how she got them. And it kind of all just fits together basically. Right. Uh, Instead of making something brand new, for right? The whole situation. That you would have to spend half the movie dealing with. You know what I mean? Anytime you deal, bring something new in. Yeah, half because at least the Tesseract, you know the history right everyone you know. knows what's going on right if you've seen a marvel movie or at least a decent amount of them you would know what the tesseract fucking does by now and they're counting on that that's a good world build and so the thing i wanted to discuss with it that i got off track with people were complaining that it's not a origin movie 
And so for me, that pulled up the question of what makes an origin movie? You know what I mean? Yeah. And so... I mean, Iron Man was pretty, pretty good the origin movie from like him being this yeah. billionaire to him being now to the fall at the, at right. the end. Right. And I he, think that's an important was, part, yeah. part too. It's not in every origin story, but a good amount of them have that fall. Yeah, yeah. There's always a fall for the character. There has to be. Yeah. There always has there's to a be couple, a the fall only, for them. The only one who doesn't is Cap. Cap doesn't have a fall for his origin he, story. But it, for me, I feel like his fall was already at the beginning. Yeah, he, right. he never had no yeah, fall. Yeah, he, he already was, was already, already at the bottom. And technically, you could count his fall as the loss of Bucky. Yeah, that would be one, yeah. Even though it's not necessarily him, that's like a somewhat, you could say, a feeling of failing on his part. I don't know. But I do agree with you. Like, the fall. Thor has the fall. Iron Man has the fall. She has a fall. Technically. Yeah, she lost her memory. <laughs> she doesn't know what the heck's going mm-hmm. on. They they took her away, making her think she was actually great. Right. Which, you know, I think that's an important part is the fall of the origin story. Something that pushes the character down and they have to adverse against, right? There has to be adversity for the character to grow. Grow, to right. Because that's what people forget. You don't always have to have an antagonist. Sometimes adversity is the antagonist. Mm-hmm. And so I figured... You I mean, fall. Spider-Man's a good one where yeah. it wasn't really antagonist. It was just more of Spider-Man, Peter Parker being macho man and think, being prideful of himself. Yeah. Like, oh, well, you know what? You guys don't help me. I ain't going to help you. Let them go. Yeah, fine. <laughs> it's not my problem. Yeah. Except for it was. <laughs> <laughs> Except for it was. Whenever you think it's not your problem, guys, remember Spider-Man. <laughs> don't be an innocent bystander because you might be a victim. <laughs> Don't don't be don't be another Uncle Ben. <laughs> don't, don't don't let Uncle Ben's happen. No more Uncle Ben. No There's more, been like three of gonna, them. Damn it! Open like, up the Uncle Ben Foundation. Yeah, the Uncle Ben Foundation for not letting robbers go when you have the power to stop them. Very specific, but we figured we'd tackle one challenge at a time. No, but seriously, those. And so I figure those. You know, dissecting those, you see some things. You see the fall, powers. It's always powers, right? Mm. Unless they had powers, which they get powers back, right? Yeah. From the fall. That's the other one. Uh, where they're from. Pretty basic shit. You know what I mean? How they got to be where they're at, at least in some semblance. Mm. And then I'd say a mission, right? Yeah. Every Every hero needs a mission by the time they're finished. And sometimes it's different, you know what I mean? For every character... Uh, you could break it down. Spider-Man, uh, great power comes great responsibility. Uh, Captain America is pretty much protect freedom. Uh, Iron Man, s- save the world somewhat for myself. Yeah. A little bit, you know, yeah. it's like mistake, correcting my own mistakes. Thor, uh, learning how to wield power or to be, you know what I mean? A responsible of power, stuff like that. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like Captain Marvel had all those things. I don't feel like there was any question that it was an origin story. Like, it was different. Like, I I do think it was had, like, a different feel. And one of the things I will say why maybe people don't think she's emotional and something I noted, it didn't bother me, but it's something I noted about the story. They don't go out of their way in this story to make her likable. No, that's that's something they they don't do, really. Yeah, They don't. And they do it in other movies. Like, other origin hero movies in in general you do stuff to make the character likable yeah. right and like i said it really didn't bother me because one i didn't really like her that much already uh but even more so like it didn't affect what she did you know what i mean her actions are all still the same whether you like her or not the results are all still the same mm-hmm. and so it didn't really bother me but i think that might bother other people and why she seems to come off as unemotional because they're not connecting with her because she's not being made that likable, you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it was it was good. I yeah, or everything was just good. I still thought. Yeah, it was really good all around. Like I could still have nothing bad to say about it. But like I said, I, there was nothing there. I, there were gripes for me, but nothing bad. They were all just personal things, like the Marvel thing. Like I realized that they didn't even have to put Marvel in this movie. You know yeah, I mean? no, they didn't really have to. They didn't. Uh, they could have they done really experimental. Just ignored the whole her being. And it that. was yeah, but it was nice. It was a nice addition, right? It's yeah. always nice to get a shout out for the comic fans. Blue Blood, awesome. Also, glad they kept that detail. Oh, all right, that would have been really pissing me off at some point if I if they hadn't done it. You know what I mean? 
Or at least I feel like it would have. Maybe it wouldn't have actually, but I feel like it would have been a little rough. Because it's like, they're bleeding red blood. <laughs> 100% Earth Man. Go, oh, uh, they call me. Right. But, uh, no I mean, it was a good movie. Other than that, I, uh, I can't wait to see her in Avengers yeah. and see what she's going to do. The, that after credit scene was pretty cool. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I like that. I just like, I need to know who's on the other end of this. With it, uh, Where is Fury? You know, what did you think about the his eye? The yeah, the flarking. Eye. So did, did you like that? That's the reason for it? I've heard a lot of hate from Yeah, I, I heard a lot of hate, but I'm like, like they're just but what like, were you going to do? What, what was the big... Also, they're like, oh, he got his eye scratched. So he got his eye taken by what is a highly dangerous, as rated by the Kree, not by humans, alien animal that could kill an entire squadron of Kree, scared the living shit out of the scrolls. But that, I guess that's not badass enough. He's, he's supposed to get like mauled by a rhinoceros riding a fucking motorcycle <laughs> wielding a flaming sword. I think people sword are just expecting him to get shot in the eye or something like that. You know, uh, and, and don't get me wrong. The funny thing is it really wasn't that far from my original expectation. My only difference was I thought it was going to be a scroll. Yeah. Just scroll as a cat. Bam. Yeah. Otherwise, pretty much played out exactly as I thought it would in my head once they showed the cat in the trailer. Like, yeah, everyone, did they not see that coming? And they were no, hinting they, at it the whole damn time. You know, yeah, they kept saying, too, that, she, that the cat was going to steal the show. And I kept looking for those issues, too. I was, like, looking for Captain America 5, or I guess that's where Rocket Raccoon explains to Captain Marvel. That, what a hey, flarkin that, is, that's, yeah. a, that's a fucking flarkin you have right here. And that's, I'll sell it. I'll kill it right now, and I'll sell it. I can make a lot of money. And she's like, no, no, through the whole thing. And then it's a flarkin. Yeah, it yeah, it's a flarkin. I remember that issue, which is why when they started saying it, I was like, are they really going to do a flarkin? Yeah. Because I thought it was so weird to add such a minor... But it's like cool, like everyone likes it, and like yeah, it I was, was, I, was I, I love it. Did steal the show? It was really awesome. Like, like I said, me that was the number one joke we were saying at the end of the thing. Flarkins, <laughs> <laughs> it's like ah, oh, it'll be fine. No man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> looking at him like, like mm. he didn't even say that, but he was just like, mm, mm, that's. Mm, mm. <laughs> I thought it was good though. I I, was like cool. I said, even I, like I understand why people don't like it and that they're fine to have their opinions, but realistically, like I said, what were they what was they gonna do? Have like I said, have him shoot like I said, burn his eye out when the Kree wouldn't come on, there's there's only so much you can even show on yeah. the movie. You know what I mean? And realistically, if I remember correctly, the original Nick Fury loses his eye in almost an equally ridiculous manner. <laughs> If I remember correctly, it's something stupid. It's not something huh. war related. I'd have to look it up, but I'm almost certain the original Nick Fury lost his eye in some dumbass way. Like, not exactly the same, but in a fair, in a fairly similar manner of not being involved with combat or not being involved with. This. I just let him. Whose side are you on, Goose? <laughs> Come on, Goose, choose a side. <laughs> yeah, what was the cat's original name? It was. Uh... It was Goose. Oh, comics, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. In the um, comics, I couldn't I remember. I forgot what they called it. It's um, that's why a lot of people didn't think it was gonna be that person, right? Because, because it wasn't when the Funko Pop came out. It said Goose, and everyone was like, "Well, what? Wait, wait, wait a the minute. That's uh, not his name." Let's see. I got this. I want to see now. Yeah, his name's something else in the comics. They don't name him Go uh, Goose. I forgot what it was. It was. Uh, Chewy. Chewy. Oh, because yeah, because Chewy. she named him because she named him after Chew, uh, Chewbacca. Ah, there, ha, we go. Ha, there we go. There we go. That's great. And like I said, it was such a nice, like, little thing to add in that. I would like, like you said, Chewy really... better, though. I, would, I like that name better. I think, I think maybe it would have been cool. That nah, might not know. might have been licensing. That's one. what I was going to say. Because they licensing. do technically own the character of Chewy the Flurkin, Marvel. But uh, as we know, that doesn't always crossover yeah well. so i'm curious if they just gonna um, do it and, or and i think the other thing being that they might have just wanted to give us that surprise like the little and the, they do that often where they'll change yeah. minor things to keep you from yeah. or the, and they're famous for it changing the trailer oh yeah uh and honestly everyone's always like i'm like no dude change the trailer keep me on my toes man keep me so, on my toes 
Well, did you see now one thing I've talked to you about? Have you seen Umbrella Academy? Yet? I have. Have you seen it all? I haven't finished. I'm on like oh episode my gosh, eight. Gosh, you need to finish it. It's all. so good, dude. I really I was so stupid, and I did not you didn't... pick those books up when I should have. When you they were like fifteen, ten dollars, and, and now, now they're, they're like thirty. Like, no, 40. the the free comic book day goes for like a hundred, two hundred, depending on the grade. Well, it is book. really hot right now, and they're getting another season. And like each issue that's coming out or going up in price like everyone because almost every issue had a first appearance of, of somebody oh yeah they're very good um, about it and, and it's a really i want to check out the comics more now because oh i can't even get the freaking trade book because Dude, all can't. the comic stores they're sold, sold. Them out on amazon can't but get it's them. because the they did such a good job on that netflix yeah adaption. And, I, that, and that's why i want to read the comic to see how oh I've, I've picked, heard they I picked up tropes. one and two of the new one he just came I, out with yeah and i haven't gotten so the I'm new gonna, one i'm gonna the, read those so i want to check those out but yeah and for me, it was a lot. I think the story is good, but I think it really is an all-around package for that show because I was kind of on and off for the first episode or two. Really, I first episode was like the one that boom oh, done, no. hooked I, me. I I'm didn't, done. I'm I didn't watch get this. hooked. This is like X Men emo style. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I liked it, but one they had some interesting graphic stuff. So the giant guy, right? He looks so bad. Oh, you're not. talking about... Uh, Fuck, what's his name? Uh, uh, Space Boy. Space Boy, yeah. So Space Boy... Because in the comics, it's really... I've heard some people say that you can watch the show and not have to really read the comics. So don't really worry about it because they, they, they went... It's one yeah, of those ones where they kind of just diverge. Which is fine. I just want to see the original material and yeah, see yeah. how it sources. But the thing about him was... And I obviously they explain later, but his hulking appearance early looks so bad. I love it. I, I, think I love so it. Bad. I don't know why. I just I love the way they made the book. And so I didn't get into it. I until... just was like, you're like, okay, when you see him, you're just like, okay, you know, this is not gonna be your normal kind of show. Right. You know, you're watching. Well, I kind of knew that as soon as it runs off. Like they do a very good job. It also it has a very lemony Snicket's feel about it. But Did that's what that? it is, though, because it is. I know that's Gerard right there for sure. You can feel that's Gerard way. He's kind of like his little mm, little, oh, little yeah. spice stone in there. Yeah, you definitely can. And, and that's why that's why I told you. Like felt to me like emo X Men. Oh, it, through, it, like, it definitely did. As soon as I saw it, I even actually if you read the about comics it. a little bit, even the covers. You look at the covers; they're very like gothic and like. Oh. Oh, yeah, I mean, it looks very much to the style. Even the the styling in the show is very gothic, eighteen hundreds for both their location and their yeah kind of outfitting. I like, but, and it's kind of got a little steampunk. Do you get that a little bit too uh, steampunk? I, there's a just a little bit, bit not but, too much. Yeah, not too much, but I do see, especially when they're dealing with the future people. Yeah, they yeah, get more yeah. Of the yeah. Steampunk that right there is where I get more yeah. like steampunk kind of. Uh, but I didn't really get too into it until five shows up. Really? Yeah, most I, don't know, I like just, five. One just really. But, I oh, think yeah. it was for me because in one, there's not a very big display of their powers. Yeah. Through most of the episode. I think honestly. what got me was more of like, what the f hell is going right, on? Right. Which, <laughs> which is why I stayed. And because at first I was like, all right, I want to see where it's going. And at the end of the first episode, I was even, I mean, I was always going to go to the second episode just because I liked the premise and everything. Like I said, that's what kept me with it. But at the second, I was like, this really has taken a little bit for me to get latched on this is a because slow burner for you. it's just a little slow start. Once it got going, it wasn't, you know, very yeah. slow at all. But it, and I, I know why they did it. They needed to set up the characters the, a little the, bit and more. the universe. Yeah. It was a, it's a really big that too. story. You know what I mean? It's not very linear either. It's a very big no. expanding story that does not follow one track. Yeah. He, cause I, it's not like, you know, he kind of did the same thing when he first came out with these, like uh, Mike Mignola when he did his Hellboys. There, it's not just like one, two, three, go all the way to 300. Yeah. Mike Mignola was like, I just did a couple of miniseries here, 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 and there. It's kind of the same thing with the yeah. Umbrella Academy. He didn't do like one through 20 or one through no, 30. He's... It's just kind of miniseries. So like right now he's doing Umbrella Academy Hotel Oblivion. And then the, f the first, first one was called... Um, umbrella academy uh, apartment suites or something like that i can't remember but yeah same thing he's just kind of doing there's not that much like on the on like these books like he came out in 2008 which the first appearances of them was in a free comic book day book. yeah and crazy. just to think about that like a free comic book day book has went up in price up to 300 dollars. Yeah. yeah it's ridiculous and i don't i feel like this show or i feel like that book is not going to come down i feel like now maybe once the show's done and i don't all, think but that it, specific it may one be, will it might settle down like at 150 it might, book, i don't think but... it's ever going to get too much lower one because it's because it's that free comic book day 
they don't release those again. They, they're, they're not yeah. gonna, that's a very specific point in time release thing. You know what I mean? They might do reprints and stuff, but and you're never going to get a popular book when they first came out. Not a lot of people were looking for Umbrella Academy. No. Not a lot of people knew. Oh, about you, it well, or... and you know how the shows work. Like as soon as the show blows up, same with the walking dead the walking dead comic book was not no, that popular at all I, i've seen people post or like i i made the mistake of like walking through the comic stores when i first seen walking dead coming out and it was sitting on the rack for at least a good month before anybody anybody touched it <laughs> because literally it was not a huge series it was something that once it got picked up for the tv title exploded it just and granted that's partially because of AMC doing so a good well. Good job of it. Yeah. yeah, they did excellent on the first couple seasons of The Walking Dead. And yeah. Later they get a little. I mean, don't get me wrong. They still I've do been a good job. Still watching it, but um, I I feel like now kind of came back again. The shows did it. Okay. It's a little bit better. I have I whispers. haven't watched since Negan. Yeah, after between that part till now, this new season is kind of dull. I didn't care for it. I, but I, now I just didn't even get through the Negan stuff. Not because it wasn't good, but because one, I was waiting on the weekly releases, mm -hmm. which just kills me. And then two, there was a billion other things to watch rather than the eighth yeah. season of Walking Dead. Like I'm still catching up on The Gifted. I'm still catching up on oh, Runaways. The so I'm good. still catching I love up. The gifted. I need to go back because I, I'm like, I don't even think I'm finished with the first season. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm so far behind because I was just doing all these other things and had no time to yeah. sit and watch yeah. the information. And it was kind of the same with Umbrella Academy. Like, I really enjoyed it, but I had to stop and I just haven't had a chance that to one sit I down had and binge it. through. I had to. I binged like seven just episodes, so but. Good to me. I, I like, especially like you said, when number five came in. Five makes five, the story oh run. Gosh. Because without five, the story doesn't actually run forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? But really, even more than that, there's ones. I'm, I'm going to pull it up for the stream. Fuck it. I don't care. Take us down. There's one scene, and I can find it specifically, that hooked me on the rest of the show. You're talking about the part where he's fighting in the donut yeah, shop? Yeah, you, you know the one. Yeah, yeah that's right. And it's the music more more than anything. No, bro. you know what? That's what I loved about the show, too. Yes, the music. music. Oh, the, my god. And they talked about it. There's like, a whole playlist that people put together just from that because it's such a good it's, fucking comp. It's like you would like, mm, I don't know why this song goes with this, but it does. <laughs> okay, and then I started watching uh, this and stopped immediately. Velvet Buzzsaw. Oh my god! I just, I didn't know what I was in for. Okay, yeah. So I'm on like episode seven. So I still got a good ways to go. What do they got? Thirteen? Yeah, I think it was. 13. Oh no, it's only no, 10. it's only ten. Yeah, it was only ten episodes. So I was actually fine because I, I just got past. Kind of, that's the, how they always do it, though. Netflix will always so usually do like ten, maybe eight episodes. I can't remember. Is that the end of one or the beginning of two? I want to feel like it's three. Is it three, really? Yeah, I feel like it's three. No. no it's got to be two, it's two Because he starts the episode in the diner yeah, with the so dude drinking two. coffee. Doesn't he? Or yeah, maybe I'm high. It's two. I think it's two. I think you're right. But I, let's see. What, and then we'll put it up on air for him. Yep, because there he comes back. Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. Is this it? <laughs> and then their dad's like Professor X. Oh, you know what? It looks like it might have been at the end of one because these guys are, no 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 they don't show for a second no it is at the end of one so it was at the end of one that kept me going because the until that scene i'm like what's going on here yep oh yeah i just said so what song did they play it was like it's, a country song no or it's it's a swing song uh called constantinople yeah, I went and looked it up later to listen to it because I really enjoyed the song. All right, so let's get this going. I need to... How did the chrome go off? That's my question. Oh, I must have closed it. <laughs> Let me just skip a little bit here. Yeah, because up to here, there's really not a lot of action at all. It's all storytelling. Yeah, there's a little bit of action, but nothing, uh, nothing too serious. We're gonna mute the mic real quick, everybody.